One Asian country is rolling out a brand new residence program. And unlike almost any other residence program in Asia, this one promises to offer citizenship to investors. I'm gonna give you all the details. So the Southeast Asian nation of Cambodia is rolling out its new CM2H program, Cambodia My Second Home, basically borrowing the name from Malaysia's My Second Home, MM2H, which has been in existence for a long, long time, is the most successful immigration program in the world by numbers and uh, has recently increased the amount of income that you need to have to qualify and the amount of money that you need to put in the bank to qualify. And so Cambodia is basically taking the things that people didn't like anymore about Malaysia's program and saying, uh, we're gonna roll out a program that makes it easier. You make an investment, you get a residence permit, and you can even work towards citizenship. I'm gonna tell you about that. And if it's your first time here, my name's Andrew Henderson. I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce your taxes, diversify and protect your wealth, and obtain second residence, second citizenships all around the world to diversify yourself in these crazy times. We also host an annual event called Nomad Capitalist Live. So uh, here is the basic. Uh, you've got to invest $100,000 and you're gonna get a residence permit that lasts for 10 years. So again, if you're familiar with the Malaysian My Second Home program, Malaysia, obviously a more developed country, one of the, the most developed countries in Asia, uh, they are borrowing a lot of the things that worked in Malaysia. So according to the government's new uh, official website, you're basically gonna get a 10 year, what they call golden visa. I generally think of golden visa as something that you get in Europe, um, but golden visa could apply here because there is a pathway to citizenship, 10 year renewable permit, uh, no need to uh, actually spend time in Cambodia, no need for any entry or exit restrictions, which I think is alluding to the fact that in some uh, Gulf countries, you sometimes need to get a visa to leave the country. And after five years of holding the permit, you are eligible for Cambodian citizenship. Now, are you gonna get Cambodian citizenship without living there? Because the nature of, let's say, a golden visa in Europe is you don't actually need to live in the country, but you have the option to live in the country. So if you're an American, if you're um, Australian, if you're St. Lucian, and you wanna go and live in Greece or Portugal or Latvia, whichever country their golden visa offers, you don't have to live there. You may or may not qualify for citizenship after X number of years, but you don't have to live there, but you can also live there all the time and you can change your mind every year. And so basically uh, that's what most of the investor programs in Asia offer. Malaysia's My Second Home recently added a requirement for new applicants to spend 90 days per year in the country. So that does make it more of a commitment. Cambodia is not gonna have that requirement, but then if, again, if you want citizenship, uh, I do believe while the details aren't out, I do believe there will be a physical presence requirement. It could be as much as six months, okay? They're touting this as the only way that you could become a Cambodian citizen. And so uh, if that is the only way that a foreigner can do it, we'll have to see. I don't really think that they're gonna just be giving citizenships to anybody who invests $100,000 um, and doesn't ever live there. The interesting question will be, are you gonna be required to learn Khmer language? And so if you are, that's gonna basically knock it out for a lot of people, right? I mean, it's hard enough for a lot of people who are now looking at the UAE starting to very slowly opening up citizenship for people who are investing there with the requirement to learn Arabic. Uh, Cambodia, unlike some of the Gulf countries, won't require you to give up your citizenship. But if you have to learn the language, that's a pretty difficult language to learn. A whole new set of characters, a whole new everything. So uh, let's just get to the details, right? $100,000 investment. What's the investment gonna be in? Unlike what you might have seen with like a citizenship by investment program where you make a $100,000 investment that's a donation, this is not gonna be a donation. However, again, details are scant. My concern is that since what you're supposed to invest in isn't clear yet, they have mentioned real estate, my feeling is you're gonna see this where it's gonna be a list of approved projects. So we've got a friend, Reed, who runs investasian.com and has a property business in Cambodia and gets really, really great deals and good returns and all that. Not investment advice, just kind of stating my uh, personal opinion. Uh, are you gonna be able to go and work with someone like him to make a $100,000 investment and then uh, you know, have that qualify for this Cambodia My Second Home? I would hope you could. My concern is that they might limit it to certain projects. And so when he's still paying under $1,000 a meter for properties in the city center, if you drive from the airport, you'll see stuff you know, halfway from the airport that's $2,000, $2,500 a meter for new construction, which sometimes isn't as good quality as some of the older stuff if you renovate it and fix the problems. And so 
my concern is that you're going to be buying some 45 square meter, you know, 500 square foot condo that's not even the best location. That's going to be your $100,000 investment, but that remains to be seen. If you can buy anything you want, buying property in the city center uh, has become incredibly difficult. A lot of the village chiefs basically aren't signing off on property for foreigners to buy. You could never own land in Cambodia, which would be the benefit of being a citizen, then you could own land. But obviously when you're getting the My Second Home, you can't own land. You can't just buy a villa. Can you buy an apartment? Can you buy a condo? Yes. Some of the, the better deals in the old town uh, are increasingly very difficult for foreigners to own. And so for all those reasons, this $100,000 investment may not be the best growth investment. Can you resell it in the future? Perhaps. Uh, but my understanding of this kind of program is that much like Malaysia's My Second Home requires you to keep a bank deposit of a million ringgit, about 225,000 US dollars for the entirety of your stay, right? That in all likelihood, unless you were to qualify for citizenship in Cambodia, you would have to maintain that investment or at least get some kind of new investment. And so therefore, uh, the potential for profit is low. So my understanding and what we see from this newly rolled out program, which is just ramping up, it's going to be a $100,000 investment. You can live in Cambodia as often as you want. You don't have to live there as often as you want. Uh, you can not live there at all. You can just keep it in your back pocket. You've got a place you can live. For $100,000, it's probably not going to be the absolute best place to live, given, again, what we know, but you've got a place to go. And so it's, a, it's kind of a, uh, the ultimate plan B, uh, a bug out spot. I mean, this could be interesting. I think Cambodia is an interesting country. And so what I like about this program, if you go to their website, is it's, it is less formal. I like the, you know, the Malaysia program, the Cambodia program, Thailand's program. I mean, Thailand literally uses a Gmail account to accept applications for one of their programs. And the fact is, I don't think that no matter where you're from in the world, you know, um, you know, as long as you have a clean criminal record, you should be able to get in here. It's not like one of the U.S. or U.K. programs where they're really strict and it's lots of official paperwork. You're going to need to make an investment, prove that you made the investment, and then get the residence. And they're claiming they're going to do it in even under a month. There is no income requirement. There's no net worth requirement. There's not even any insurance, to, uh, any requirement to get health insurance, which is a requirement for a lot of the other Asian programs. And there's even some suggestion that's going to be provided under one of the benefits that you get in this immigration program. So if you've got 100 grand to invest, I think they're just basically going to leave you alone, which is interesting because Cambodia has become more difficult at issuing, especially longer term, even like 12 month e-visas, not electronic visa you get online, but a series e-visa, like a business visa, they become more difficult in issuing those for folks who don't really have any kind of business there. So I think that you'll probably see that trend continuing. The ability to live in Cambodia on the cheap may go away as they kind of push this program, much in the same kind of way that Montenegro made renewing residents through real estate ownership more difficult as the citizenship by investment program came into place. And so I think that um, bottom line, if you've got $100,000 to invest in Cambodia, you'll have the ability to live there and you can, we'll see what happens, work towards citizenship. Now, why would you want to live there? Certainly it's not as developed as a country like Malaysia or even like Thailand. If you want to look at up and coming business opportunities, I was talking to a client recently, he said, oh, there's parts of Cambodia, uh, parts of Phnom Penh that remind me of Singapore. That seems a little bit aggressive, but you do have great cafes. The brown cafes are there. When Starbucks finally came in, they had to up their game to compete with this local upstart brown cafe chain. They've got great cafe culture there. Uh, they've got some great restaurants, great dishes like fish and moke. I mean, if you like food, it's maybe not the best food seen in Asia, uh, but they've got some really good food. It's not as cheap as you might imagine because the economy is largely dollarized. Um, and so I think that in many ways, living in a place like Malaysia or Thailand is actually cheaper. But if you want to see up and coming Asia, if you want to see wide open opportunities, uh, Cambodia is really moving in the right direction. And you've seen property prices in places like Sihanoukville, which I first went to a decade ago, they've shot through the roof. I mean, it's just been incredible. And the level of development has been incredible. So if you want to see someplace developing in front of your very eyes and you want to park $100,000 to have a residence, then you can do this with CM2H. Why would you want the passport? People say, oh, Cambodian passport is not very good. And it's not. Uh, years ago, the African nation of the Comoros had a $45,000 citizenship program. And that passport was probably equally, you know, not that appealing in terms of visa-free travel. However, what I think is interesting about a Cambodian passport, number one, it's part of the ASEAN um, block. Right? So you've got all the countries in Southeast Asia where they're part of this ASEAN. And so you see ASEAN banks in, for example, Malaysia, moving in and opening up a presence in Cambodia. So kind of like a, a lessened version of the EU without all the regulatory nonsense. 
Um, you're seeing countries, the bigger, more developed countries, investing in Cambodia, and you're seeing towers going up all over the place, malls, I mean, really beautiful stuff. And so that development, I think, will continue. What a Cambodian passport, though, offers is you have visa-free access throughout the block. And so if you value being in Asia, you can go to Thailand, which let's say you're um, uh, a citizen of a Caribbean country, Caribbean uh, citizenship by investment country. None of those offer visa-free access to Thailand or even e-visa access to Thailand. And so you could have a Cambodian passport. You might raise an eyebrow every once in a while, but now that this program's coming out, I think it'll be more common. And so you could go to Thailand and you could spend time in Thailand as a tourist. Now you don't, listen, most Asian countries have some kind of investment residence program. Thailand has the Thai elite. They have numerous different investment visas. So if you want to live in Thailand, you don't need a Cambodian passport to do that. But if you want to have an Asian passport that allows you to visit different countries, while obviously having the ability to spend as much time as you want in Cambodia, either as a resident or if you ever obtain citizenship, that's interesting. So compared to what people were paying $45,000 for in the Comoros back up until about 2017, until the program was suspended, the Cambodian passport is actually a little bit better because you have some of the same African countries, if that's important to you, uh, that you have visa on arrival to. Um, you actually have visa on arrival to uh, Ukraine and Georgia and a few uh, Central Asian countries. You have visa-free travel to Ecuador and Nicaragua and Panama. So, I mean, you have a little bit of a footprint. Uh, getting to some of those countries in the Americas could be difficult uh, without a transit visa. But basically, if you want to be in kind of Central Asia, Southeast Asia, um, you've got e-visa to countries like India, Nepal, um, again, to a lot of Eastern Africa and Southern Africa. So if that's your area, I talk to people where they're like, I only want to live in Asia. I really don't care about anywhere else in the world. And so if you, let's say you're a U.S. citizen, you just want a second passport, you could work towards this. Is, it, is that what I would recommend, that you'd only be a Cambodian citizen? Yeah, probably not. Um, but you are gonna have a unique amount of access to Asia. And as a citizen, you'll have access to buy whatever kind of property you want. So you wanna buy land, you wanna buy villas, you wanna buy whatever. Cambodia does force people to actually use the land. They don't want people just to sit on land, so they do um, have mechanisms to make sure that people aren't just kind of land banking. Um, land compared to Eastern Europe, to me, in Cambodia is quite expensive. By Asian standards, I suppose it's cheap, but land is expensive in Cambodia by some other parts of the world, Ecuador or Georgia or something like that. Um, but again, cheaper than what you'd find elsewhere in Asia. So citizenship gives you the ability to own land and to travel on a Cambodian passport. Interesting kind of backup for someone who's more Asia focused and wants to do business in Asia. The residence program gives you the ability to live there, gives you a backup plan and gives you that optionality potentially for citizenship in the future while making an investment. And I think that the, the, the legal fees on this are gonna be pretty, pretty reasonable, right? This is not gonna be a thing where you've gotta um, go through an all out process of document collecting. From my experience in Thailand, in Malaysia, and other places in Asia, it's gonna be straightforward, it's gonna be easy. Now, is Cambodia the place for you? Definitely more rugged, more adventurous, more frontier. I think it's a great place to look at for investment. Malaysia, Thailand, maybe more for lifestyle, Singapore more for business, but this could be an interesting place. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how the CM2H program unfolds.